ni za jioni uh while tunawasubiria wenzetu i just prefer we we might proceed for some point the meters on the way uh was a timing factor i understand we have tuna vitu vingi vya kufanya and ni jioni na labda tumetoka kazini so uh, i would like to proceed with uh, today's session and then the rest of the team wengine wata join and then they find us on the way and then we shall brief them what we have managed to do for today so our session for today it will be all about mobile learning and i shall take you through uh, the concept of mobile learning and how it can assist us in the process of teaching and learning so uh, these are the details of the presenter my name is francis mashala and areas my areas of expertise are on mobile learning e learning mobile application development and there is my phone number as well as my e email address plus the website and also my my picture so that is brief about francis who will be taking you through this uh, today's session on mobile learning so the agendas that we are going to have today we are going to check on the overview and the uh, outcome that we do expect out of this then i shall take you through the introduction to mobile learning and its significances then i shall take you through mobile education apps and finally we shall go through the practical session in selected in selected education apps so just overview uh, the first thing i would like to welcome you all to to some initiative soft skills course on mobile learning uh, this course will give you an opportunity to explore mobile capacity and tools which will aid you in the process of teaching and learning so basically we're going to check on uh, mobile tools and by which uh, they can assist you as a an educator you as a teacher in the process of teaching as well as uh, the process of learning new concept uh, in this uh, field of IT or ICT but basically these apps they are they are, they, are, they are being developed in target in a targeting a particular subject area so basically what we do expect uh we do expect to build an understanding the common understanding of of mobile learning or m learning then we are going to check on how we are going to apply mobile learning in the normal teaching and learning processes so having the understanding of mobile learning and then take in practice uh, the issue of mobile learning so i might start with a simple question and i might start with a simple question and maybe before i move forward kaandika kwenye sehemu ya chat pale kama unasikia au usikii Hello sina sikika. Uh mimi nasikia sikika na sikika. All right that's great. Nashukuru kwa sababu nilikuwa nimeona kuna kuna mwenzetu anaitwa William. Ah all right let's proceed. Uh, great William. So let's proceed. Um we are on the on the introduction to mobile learning and the first thing was just a, a general question on we need to have knowledge eh? on how, what do we think about what do you think uh, mobile learning means you can just write on the chat send me a chat unaweza kuandika uona fikiri ya nini when you hear terminology like mobile learning just andika send me a chat then tutaye tutaye before i i provide uh the definition about me na fikiria mobile learning what is mobile learning so you can just go through the chat area and now kaandika the definition of mobile learning mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, so while we are struggling to write uh, the, what is mobile learning, I see a contribution. Okay, um, from Tabora, uh, and I, say, well, I can say mobile learning is the learning through electronic device like a phone. Thank you for this uh, very constructive contribution. So basically, um, the definition is uh, a form of learning that it is delivered or access, accessible through a mobile device. Thank you. Uh, let me proceed with, uh, with other. I think on my side, uh, mobile learning is any form of knowledge that is given or delivered using handheld and portable devices. And when we speak about handheld or portable devices, there, these are these all devices like uh, smartphones, the mobile phones devices. Maybe when you speak about smartphone, tablet, and devices that are related in that way. But um, so the material are delivered in are delivered, and uh, somebody can learn and somebody can acquire knowledge through the use of those devices. So just in a bigger picture, that can be mobile learning. And it can be used for diverse use for accessing uh, learning resources and performing several activities. And I'll provide this uh, presentation. Also, I have attached here a link that can aid all of us uh, to gain more understanding about mobile learning. So let us not go very far, but let us think about how mobile phones, how smartphones, they can be used in the process of teaching and learning. So basically, that's the bigger picture on mobile learning. Um, significance of mobile learning. Um, the first significance it is uh, it offers a flexible and portable way of teaching and learning. Imagine you might be traveling um, in a dala dala or you are somewhere, not in a physical, in a physical classroom, but still, you can have access to uh, learning resources. Where it offers uh, in a in a two-way of flexibility. Um, uh, so, lazima we kwenye physical classroom, darasa na kawaida ili uweze ku access uh, learning resources. Unaweza kwa kwenye your movement, kwa kazi ni au kwa unafanya vitu vingine, and still you can proceed to learn. Still, unaweza kwa unapata contributions au unafunzi wako. Still, unaweza kwa kufanya assessment. So this is a form, this is a flexibility that is within our mobile learning. Also, it accommodates diverse type of content. When we speak about content, uh, we try to refer um, in, a, in a traditional way of teaching and learning, most of the time, content is not in a text-based content. But with our mobile learning, uh, content is not as different, diverse way. The content can be either in a picture, in a video, audios, or it uses multimedia um, in, conveying, uh, teaching, in, conveying, in conveying the learning resources. Kwa hiyo, kwa mwanafunzi ambaye anaweza kaelewa zaidi kwa kusikia au kwa kuona, it is very simple. Kwa mba anaweza kaona maybe video um, in a presented certain concept, it can erase it to a grasp material. So it accommodates diverse type of content. So as you to content is work on your maneno to content is always in the form of video. The same content they can also be in a form of animation. A bit come my view. Then uh, it will bring a self-paced and offline learning. Self-paced ni kwamba ina offer ile capacity ya monafunzi kuweza kujisomea kwa nguvu yake mwenyewe. Uh, for instance, in a, norm, in a traditional classroom, tunaweza tuka assume kwamba um, ili mwanafunzi asome, inaitajika kwamba mwalimu awepo. But with a mobile learning, ni kwamba hui mwanafunzi tumempa learning resources zipo somewhere. Kwa hui mwanafunzi tumempa access learning resources kwa mda wake, na naweza hata kasoma extra mile, tafauti na ile mile ambo mwalimu Meweka. Kwa sababu tayari umu wanafunzi ya na access, ya na diverse access of learning resources. Kwa umu wanafunzi ya na isa umezo kwa umu mba a, a very small piece of information ya content flani. Lakini umu wanafunzi kwa sababu tayari ya na, na the device ya na isa ka search more na kapata material zaidi. Na offline learning, it means that wanafunzi so lazima wapo kwenye physical classroom, anaweza kawepo nyumbani kwa, nyumbani kwa, anaweza kwa yuko kwenye barabara, anatembea, and whatever. And still, the process of learning can take place. 
So this is the kind of, uh, these are some of the significance that actually mobile learning offers. And it eliminates long distance barrier and the time barrier. Because I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, at some time, maybe at this time that we are struggling in uh, Corona and something like that. So in a distant place, maybe wako nyumbani kwao na shule ni mbali. Kwa hiyo tayari kuna barrier ya distance where wanafunzi ku access madarasa na ku access vitu kama hivyo. But with the mobile learning kwa sababu tunawapa assurance wanafunzi ya ku access learning resources, activities na vitu vyote ambavyo vinatokea katika process yao ya kujifunza. Kwa hiyo ile barrier ile barrier ya ya distance kutoka nyumbani kwa mwanafunzi kuja sehemu shule ilipo inakuwa inaondolewa so it is one of the significance of mobile learning though it has in a drawback zake lakini these are some of the things that actually promises kwamba mobile learning is something that it is uh, profitable on our side so this was my view this were some of the significance on on my side but I think we have other significance or importance of mobile learning. Um, if you have one, you can just type on the chat to Tayona Ote na to the to Taiza ku brainstorm much about you and Bome or may wake up. Okay. These are some of my significance of mobile learning. And the way you see it, you can know, type up on your chat, you can contribution. How do you find mobile learning? Is it engaging? Does it um, open a certain doors of opportunities? Something like that. So just send me a chat and you can contribution. Then what it is that you can do is brainstorm about it. Then after after having a significance of mobile learning the other thing that it is very important on our side kama uh, walim we need to think kwamba tayari tumeshafahamu what actually mobile learning is tumeshaona the significance of mobile learning we need to go an extra mile and see it says okay tumeshaona the significance and what mobile learning is now tomorrow is just a form of education that actually it is delivered through a uh, mobile technology we might have another eye of Tizama says, okay, what, what shall we do then? What shall we use for manaya tools and both of idea katika the the spread or the use of mobile learning? There are these tools like mobile education apps. Um, when we speak about application, uh, these are just a software designed to run or operate in a mobile device or smartphones. So just in the bigger picture, we think about the normal softwares, for instance, software ambos kwenye computer zetu, um, lakini hizi zimekuwa zimetengenezwa kwa jila kutumika katika vifa vidogo, kwa mana kama vifa vidogo kama sim na tablet and something like that. For instance, kuna this, hii leo tume, kuna watu ambao wame, wame join this session through Zoom. So Zoom is one of the, kwa kutumia sim, wame, wame, jo, wame we may download application as Zoom, yeah, Zoom katika seems out and they manage to join on this session. So Zoom is one of the mobile app if it has been used katika smartphone. But basically, they are just softwares. The softwares and both natumika kwa jile ya easy device ndogo kama sim and something like that. So, and when we go deeper to mobile, to mobile apps, we have, basically we have majority of distribution but the famous distribution are Android and iOS. Kwa hiyo majority of the apps zinapatikana kwa watumiaji wa simu za Android pamoja na watumiaji wa simu za iOS. Kwa hiyo ili mifumo miwili ambayo application nyingi sana zipo zipo huko. And tukijaribu kucheck even the, our market, tukijaribu kutizama even the market share at Tanzania Tawana, what wengi ndo simu ambazo wanatumia. For instance, kama watumia simu ya Samsung, Tecno, Itel, Nokia, yeah, those are some of the phones ambazo zinatumia mfumo wa Android, 
lakini kuna wanaotumia simu kama iPhones, iPad, something like that. Those are the phones ambazo zinatumia mfumo wa iOS. Kwa hiyo basically we have two famous distribution ambazo ni Android applications and iOS applications and basically they are used on those two devices kwa hiyo for Android what are down, for Android phones what are download application ambazo zinapatikana kwenye Google Play Store for iOS phones what are download application ambazo zinapatikana kwenye App Store so this is just a bigger picture of apps and how they are distributed then if that was the bigger picture on mobile apps we might also think about creating our own definition that might define mobile educational apps the first definition that we had it was a generic definition on apps but at this point we need to think if that was the generic definition of apps what actually is the definition of a mobile educational app so can somebody write to me on the message on the chat chatbot Okay thank you naona kuna contribution from Gati well uh it simplify learning and make learning interactive thank you that is one of the significance of uh, mobile learning so thank you Gati anyone can write to me on the chat kwamba anafikiria nini when anaposikia mobile educational apps tulikuwa na the definition of apps and somebody can tell me anavo kisikia mobile education apps what actually what the first thing that comes on iso a mind i'm waiting for the contribution before i go to an extra mile all right let's proceed so basically when we speak about mobile education apps these are portable software designed for delivering educational content via mobile devices or smartphones so basically when we speak about mobile educational apps they are just the normal mobile apps but they are specifically designed uh they are specifically designed uh, they are specifically designed to deliver educational content kwa hiyo zimetengenezwa kwa deliver educational content lakini zinatumia the platform ya sim kwenye the process of delivering educational content so basically it's not very far from the definition of mobile apps so from john edward kapinga mobile educational apps are designed to work in mobile devices for education purpose thank you john yeah hatuko mbali sana from the definition that i provided so thank you john for the very constructive uh, input i do appreciate that So um that was the bigger picture on um uh, mobile so after having the bigger picture on mobile app then we have a picture of mobile educational apps then we need to practice this thing we need to practice in order to make it more useful on our side and to see share to kujua kwamba this inamaanisha hivi and something like that so we need at least to see to have a practice to have a touch of these apps and to see how they can aid us in the process of teaching and learning so the practical session in the selected education apps basically we we have managed to to have a, a list of some of the mobile apps um for science and math for science and mathematics and and we also manage to to have application for language subjects and apps for art subjects and apps for ICT and uh and product Uh, sorry uh, i had a i had an an internet challenge so basically we 
tume, tumejaribu ku check some of the applications ambazo ziko kwenye cluster ya Hyamar group so we have some application for science and math uh, application for language apps for art subjects and application for ICT and productive usage so I'll just show you some of the applications and then we are going to take a trouble of doing a practical for each application then you are we all going to provide a feedback okay so before we are going to the to the practical session uh, we need also to have a consideration of this stuff so before you download any app there are some of the things that you need to consider the first thing you need to consider about the app content and context from uh, the application that I'm downloading is it designed for what type of a content for instance uh, minimally in lab or physics for you the con the content in Kwamba I'll need to download the application and Bazo is in a content of physics I might go an extra mile come okay it's a content of physics but again maybe in the advanced physics or in the beginners physics something like that so you need also to check on the context part then kuna application functionalities from the app that you're downloading in a feature the process of work with me your app I will come out and recommend your application you need also to think about those uh, functionalities then free apps and proprietary apps kuna application ambao ziko offered for free but also we have application that for you to have a use of them you need to pay so you need also to take a concern on that before you download a particular application then we have application number of installs or downloads from application you may download your marangapi and the total number of downloads and the total number of installation they are almost the same download and installation they are almost the same kwamba your application you may download you know how to charge it it might be an alerting stuff kwamba maybe your application is so much useful but if you find a lot of people have downloaded the application it is it gives you a picture that this application is so useful to most of our, most of the users also you need to check on app ads on our application numbers now a lot of matangazo so also you need to to think on those kind of stuff well these are just some of the tips zinaanza zikaipo nyingi in the world but these are just some that can aid us on the process of uh, selecting uh, an application that is resourceful and useful on our context and on our practical side uh, practical tutaifanya kwa namna hii um, the way that we are going to do the practical the first thing i will provide this uh, presentation uh, i'll provide a copy to our presentation to the group then kama ni mwalimu ambaye una deal physics na and math uta kama ni wa physics utatizama application ambazo za physics ambazo these are just selected apps utatizama uta download utakuwa nazo kwenye simu yako then you provide a feedback to us kwamba how have you found the app kwamba umetumia ime imesaidia kiasi gani on yani umeionaje hiyo application then kwa mwalimu wa mathematics pia naye atatizama one of the app or two i prefer this to take two of the applications download kwenye simu yako uzione zinaweza zikasaidia vipi the process of teaching on your side na pia unaweza kufikiria kwa visualize hata kwa the other side ya mwanafunzi kwamba the process of learning yeye mwanafunzi anaweza kujifunzaje zaidi pale ndakapo recommend application yake aweze kuitumia then this also are for biology and physical education um just take two of the application as well for geography and history and then we we have some app for ICT and psychology these are for language studies um for Kiswahili and English okay so it's a practical session so the way that we are going to do this practical session tutafanya offline kila mtu atafanya kwa muda wake then um tomorrow time like this um 
In fact, so lazima ya tomorrow inaweza ika kuanzia jioni tunaweza tuka kila mmoja akawa na share reflection kwamba nimejaribu ku download application flani maybe this is the kind of experience that uh, nime nimekutana naye while I'm using this app vitu kama hivyo it's something that may it it upsidea uh, learning from others is something that might assist us on this uh, kind of process so basically you download and install like two applications then you shall share the experience and reflection from how you may download how does it how does it perform je inaweza kukusaidia kwenye the process of teaching and kama inaweza kuwasaidia wanafunzi wako pia katika the process of learning then ukishamaliza hizo mbili za mwanzo you can download other two applications to share the experience so we need to go mobile and i do welcome a session of uh, some of the discussions uh, kama kuna swali kuna maybe a point that we need to clarify before we wind up in order to give a room what always kuendelea na mambo mengine